Hey guys, cool website that explains algorithms as if they were IKEA instruction panels here. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys an amazing card trick that you guys are going to be able to use as a little bit of an intro to whatever sort of four of a kind trick you want to do. Man, I'm just, I'm so pumped. I can't wait to show you this. We're going to use these uh, Inspire playing cards here. Uh, these, these Inspire playing cards here. Uh, so hopefully that inspires you to sub subscribe to my channel and uh, also to check out the academy, the Pig K Card Academy in the link below, uh, where you will go from a beginner to an absolute massive legend in card magic. So uh, let's let's get to the table. We need to uh, we need to get to the table. So let's go right. Uh, let's go right now. It's actually right there. That's where the table is. So let's just uh, zoom in on that finger and then do transition. Whoa, look at the production value here. I'm, I'm so amazed. So for this trick, we're gonna have the spectator mix up the cards and they can mix it up to their heart's content because we say the cards aren't really gonna matter here. What matters is that uh, we have a little bit of a collection here that I wanna show you because that's gonna aid us with the following trick. And don't worry, it's not some sort of Ed Gein collection. <laughs> Ha, uh, I don't roll that way. It's actually a little bit of a collection that I carry inside of the card box. They're just a small group of cards that I've uh, collected from other decks of similar backs. And uh, it's actually jokers. I collect jokers from different decks. Uh, this one's my favorite because it has a small pudding stain on it from Thanksgiving. But uh, it's just a small assortment of jokers. Nothing for you to get worried about. <laughs> but what these jokers allow us to do is a little bit of a trick because if we rub these on a table, you see uh, they actually turn into the aces, uh, which is kind of astonishing because where did the jokers go? Where did the, uh, where did the jokers go? That's, that's what I always ask, right? <laughs> Whoa, now we're back to the explanation here. For this trick, it's very simple. All you're doing is a flustration count and uh, a ditch. That's all that's happening. A flustration count followed by a ditch, but it's a well-covered ditch and something that you shouldn't be afraid of. Uh, so for this trick, all you need is uh, four aces and a joker, uh, and that's that's it. You're good to go. You're ready to be the life and times of every party you ever attend. And this is just kept in the cellophane. Usually, I like to keep the cellophane on boxes for this. Uh, I ripped it off because of a gag, but I keep these cards in a cellophane separate from the deck so the spectator can mix the deck all they want. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, I still have my little joker collection here that I could pull and say, I keep my collection over here. So what's gonna happen is you're just gonna spread the top three cards of the stack and show that you have uh, just four cards. You're not gonna draw attention to it and say, I have one, two, three, four cards. People aren't that dumb. So you're gonna spread the first one, spread the next one, and then spread the other one. And if you want, you can do this a little bit of a swivel flourish, of course, hiding the double here with your hand. You're very clever uh, to hide that double. So you're just spreading these cards, just uh, showing four. And uh, what's gonna happen here is you're gonna get into a frustration count sequence. So you're just gonna show, pick the cards in your right hand and show the face of the card, just like this. You're gonna turn your palm over, take the top card in the left hand and show the same card. Oh yeah, you're gonna repeat this, even uh, doofully noting some differences between the jokers if you want. Of course, they're all the same joker. So that just adds to the realism of your collection here. So you're showing a joker. If you want, you could show it in different ways as to not have a monotonous count and say, look, this one has a little bit of a spaghetti stain from Christmas. And of course, the last one, you're holding a double. So for this last one, you're actually holding a double. Oh, oh yeah. So you're gonna have to be a little bit worried about that one. But this last double goes underneath the stack and you're ready to proceed from here. Now the deck, is towards me. So I like to have the deck towards me and the table. If you're standing up, you could accommodate for your standing position. However, this deck is towards me and it's ready to have a card ditched on it. So that's its purpose here. It's going to fulfill its purpose like a sad puppy uh, drowning in the rain. So now what you're going to do is you're going to get a break below the bottom card. You could do it via buckle or via pinky pull down, however you choose to do it. Uh, either you voted for Hillary or you voted for Trump. So either you buckle or you pinky pull down, whatever you want to do to establish a break, that's what you do. As you transfer the cards to the right hand in Biddle Grip. Of course, maintaining that break with my thumb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off two cards to my left hand, peel off the third one and put it underneath. So I'm in this situation right now. I'm holding a break right there. I'm holding onto this card as I rub it on the table and show that it's in fact changed 
to an ace. So I'm just grabbing the card here, rubbing it on the table, and turning it over in this hand. Now I'm re-grabbing it with my right hand and throwing it on the table. Guess what? The natural movement is for my left hand to come down and drop the next card on the table. But where does that put this card? That's right, over the deck. You guys are way ahead of me here. Oh yes, uh, sub for, for more. Get piggy, 100K, I guess. Uh, so when your hand is over the deck, because you have that thumb break, it's very easy for you to just drop that card as your left hand is dropping the next ace. Then you could subsequently drop the next ace, of course, keeping your hands in this position. Drop the last ace, and you have a essentially conversion of four cards to another four cards where you're pretty much left clean. All you need to do is maybe do a little bit of a cut, but even that's not necessary. So let's go over that one more time in super uh, Swahili West African uh, Nile virus slow motion. So what's happening one more time, you're transferring the break to the right hand. You're thumbing off one card, thumbing off another card, thumbing off a third card and holding that with your right hand. This card gets rubbed on the table, turned over with the right hand, regripped with the right hand and it's thrown. Next hand comes in and turns that card over as this card is ditched on top of the deck. Then the hand comes over here, turns that card over, and of course everything happens now in this area where you could turn this last card over and say, uh, we're actually gonna need the aces for this particular trick. So uh, that's that's kind of interesting. I don't even know why I showed you my Joker collection, right? <laughs> it kind of just tells you how much of a sad life I have, uh, to be honest. Um, but there you have it. There you have a, a way to transform a, a set of jokers to a, another set of playing cards. Uh, that's going to be the thumbnail. That's going to be the, th the th let's get the thumbnail over here. I'm so excited for you guys to be part of that process. Uh, so that's the trick. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys perform it and practice it and do all the things that people do when it comes to videos. Uh, I'm going to go figure out different ways to try to get people to subscribe and stay subscribed because I feel like they subscribe and then they're like, wow, this guy is actually functionally retarded. So uh, that, I'm gonna do that. See you again when I see you again when I see you again when I see you See you again, when I see you again, when I see you again.